Hello and welcome to the Socrato TV, where wisdom meets reality. Uh, I am your host, Socrato, and I am welcoming you to this conversation where we deliberate on general issues uh, in our society in general. So the topic of interest today uh, is what has been trending in Kenya, uh, the billionaire woman who is said to have imported oil of worth uh, 17 billion and as per her claim, uh, the oil had been taken and confiscated by the government and the ownership uh, taken away from her. So uh, this video will look at this uh, issue from a third eye perspective and try uh, to explain uh, the possibilities of this uh, happening and how it can affect our society in general. So if you are new to our channel, uh, you are welcome. Uh, you can subscribe so that you can also continue being part of our bigger family of the Socrato TV. So the woman uh, by the name uh, Anne Njerinjo Roge, as you can see on the screen, is said uh, to have imported oil worth 17 billion. So there are a number of people who are surprised uh, by this amount. Uh, how did she get it? Uh, just before you go on, uh, maybe if I can give a little context. You know, there are very different types of business in the society. And uh, based on someone's credibility and uh, perhaps experience in the market, there are companies which can allow a person even to take uh, such amount of merchandise free without paying anything uh, because they trust him high in the market so that after selling the product, uh, he can then pay back. So it is possible that uh, Angie Rinjaroge could have gotten this by credit or it, uh, it is possible also it is her own money. Uh, although other people argue that there are some people behind uh, this whole saga. So uh, what is our area of focus today. Uh, the area of our focus today is to try and look into the intricacies of this uh, issue and how, uh, not only how it is being interpreted by people, but how uh, it is affecting the image of the Republic of Kenya uh, as well as the business people in general. So considering uh, the claims of Anjeri are true, uh, where he, she says that the government has taken, has forcefully taken uh, the oil from her, which I find uh, to be, uh, it's likely to be true because it is very, very, very difficult for a person just to come out and start claiming that the government has taken his merchandise, considering the, the value, uh, uh, that kind of value. It is very, very difficult for a person just to claim without having any basis. So, uh, in case that this is true, which I uh, I think it is likely to be true, then I think it has painted the government of Kenya in a bad light. That is, its reputation has been dented, uh, for, both to the domestic investors and the external investors. So if a person, an investor who is not uh, yet to, uh, who is not yet uh, established in Kenya, was thinking of coming to the country, uh, like any other entrepreneur, the first thing they will try to check about how things are going up in the country, how other entrepreneurs have been treated, and such stories will chase away investors and that is why uh, we have had the president of Tanzania that is Samia Suluhu coming out and saying that he she has been getting very many investors uh, than ever before uh, those who are 
the investors who had who had planned to come in Kenya will find it easier and feasible to work in the Republic of Tanzania than in Kenya. We have also seen uh, Museveni, that is the president of uh, the president of Uganda, deciding that the oil will be passed through Tanzania to his country than in Kenya. And so when you look at all these factors and take them into consideration, I think it logically uh, makes us think or agree with Anjeri uh, that indeed the investors who are in Kenya are not facing, are not finding it smooth. And uh, one of the reasons this could be is because of the policies and uh, to some extent the governance that uh, the Republic of Kenya is currently experiencing. There is this investor who who owns many factories in the Republic, especially the sugar industry by the name Rai, who was also abducted uh, in a very same way as Anjeri. The only difference is that he did not come out and speak anything. Perhaps he was threatened to the extent uh, that he could not speak. Or perhaps because he is a foreigner, he, uh, he found it fit not to speak. So this um, the, the general conversation or um, my interpretation of this happening in the Republic of Kenya and taking the Anjeri as a case is that uh, in terms of uh, economically, uh, the Republic of Kenya is not headed in the right tra trajectory. Even just looking at how the purchasing power of the shilling uh, is depreciating every day, uh, it, uh, although people, although we understand that the, the whole world has been experiencing an economic crisis, uh, but when you look at, when you compare, for example, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, you find that in Kenya, the effect uh, seems uh, to be more than the other countries. Uh, and it could be because of a systemic problem or a problem deeper than what we could be seeing, which needs uh, to be addressed as soon as possible. And uh, even though I, I think uh, the government and the leadership in general are responsible for this, we should not at the moment or at this particular time focus on hitting uh, the government or maybe trying to find an alternative. We should first try and advise uh, this re the government and the relevant uh, officials about how uh, they should run uh, the economy of a republic. That way, uh, we will be adding uh, some value uh, to our country as well as uh, uh, the general economy. Because if you focus on changing the government, perhaps it will maybe even worse. Because what, how, how sure are you that by now taking over, already dilapidated economy you will change it even if today assuming you are uh, the azmio die hard if today Raila Molodinga took over this government it will not change overnight although perhaps because he has been he has good experience he has good network connection and also he has a good track record it is more feasible if we work more on trying to make this government work than trying to put it down uh, so that by the year that is the year of election if we will have seen that the effort we are putting in by trying uh, to make them work if that will not have been fruits uh, then that will be the time we kick out uh, this regime I also do not subscribe to the idea that uh, perhaps if people who voted for this regime 
uh, now you are angry with them so that you also vote for the same regime so that you can punish them and that is a very very childish ideology in the sense that uh, it's like uh, someone who did wrong to you uh, as an individual so instead of trying uh, to help yourself and uh, get out of the mess uh, you go further and also do something wrong against your Self, so, so that you can show the person uh, that what he did uh, did not uh, make you happy. So I also do not subscribe to the idea of perhaps uh, doing what another person did wrong way so that you can uh, make the matters worse. So that is my analysis today and I know I have been wide uh, from the, the, the topic which was analyzing the story of Angeri, but it is for the sake of making it more clear and comprehensive. Thank you so much for taking your time to listen uh, to the wisdom from the Socrates TV. Until you meet again, bye bye.